Eastern California's Death Valley is a valley in the northern Mojave Desert that borders the Great Basin Desert. It is the hottest area on Earth in the summer. The Badwater Basin in Death Valley, which is 282 feet 86 meters below sea level, is the lowest place in North America. With an elevation of 14,505 feet, it is located 84.6 miles or 136.2 kilometers east-southeast of Mount Whitney, the highest point in the contiguous United States. The hottest ambient air temperature ever recorded on the surface of the Earth was 134 degrees Fahrenheit 56.7 degrees Celsius at Furnace Creek in Death Valley on the afternoon of July 10, 1913, according to the United States Weather Bureau. Some contemporary experts, however, disagree with this reading and a number of others made during that time, a century ago. It is also one of the hottest spots on Earth, the driest place in the USA, and the lowest point in North America. But Death Valley is one of the USA's most inspiring road excursions from mid-October to mid-May. Death Valley is just a four and a half hour trip from Los Angeles or a two and a half hour drive from Las Vegas and is located on the California-Nevada border. The National Park Service is in charge of many areas in Death Valley that have been declared wilderness areas. Death Valley makes up a large portion of Death Valley National Park and is the main feature of the Mojave and Colorado Desert's Biosphere Reserve. It is located primarily in Inyo County, California, close to the border between California and Nevada, in the Great Basin, and to the east of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. The Grapevine Mountains and the Owl's Head Mountains, which serve as its northern and southern limits, are located between the Panamint Range on the west and the Amargosa Range on the east. Death Valley experiences long, extremely hot summers, brief, moderate winters, and minimal rainfall. It has a subtropical, hot desert climate. Due to its location in the rain shadow of four significant mountain ranges, the valley is exceedingly dry, including the Sierra Nevada and Panamint Range. To get to Death Valley, moisture must travel inland from the Pacific Ocean and cross the mountains to the east. As air masses are pushed upward by each range, they cool and condense moisture, which then falls as rain or snow on the western slopes. Most of the moisture in the air has already been lost by the time the air masses reach Death Valley, so little of it is still available for precipitation to form. Death Valley's ecological, geological, and historical treasures are delicate despite its rough exterior. Take care not to damage the wilderness value of this national asset so that future generations can enjoy it. If you're coming from Nevada, the experience starts in the wild hamlet of Beatty, also known as the Gateway to Death Valley, which is located just outside the park. In the early 1900s, Beatty provided service to adjacent mining communities like Rhyolite, which had 53 saloons, three newspapers, and a train station during its brief existence. The hills surrounding Beatty beckoned many artists and free thinkers after the mining boom. The Mojave has traditionally attracted those who are spiritual. Stretch your legs at Father Crowley Overlook, which is dedicated to the guy they call the Desert Padre, if you're entering the park from the California side. Darwin Falls is a 10-mile drive farther into the park and serves as a gentle reminder that, despite the park's ominous reputation, it actually sustains an astonishing variety of life. Shake off the dust at Panamint Springs after Darwin Falls. 
Remember to restock on petrol and water before heading out onto the back roads, whether you want to spend the night or are simply stopping by to whet your appetite. This is not a place for the unprepared. To reach the Wild Rose Kills, which originally produced the charcoal required to process chunks of Death Valley or into silver, take the gravel roads to the south. Visit the Eureka Mine, where pick-swinging wealth seeker Peter Garibari spent his whole life. Instead of striking it rich, the Frenchman discovered tranquility, one of Death Valley's greatest riches. The always amiable Agaraberry took travelers to the location he termed the Great View when they first started exploring Death Valley in their cutting-edge automobiles in the 1930s. Climb to his favorite viewpoint to witness the breathtaking sight of the Panamint Mountains tumbling 6,000 feet into the valley below. Go further into the sun-baked center of the park at Stovepipe Wells after exploring the Panamint Range's side roads. A group of wandering 49ers burned their wagons, ate their oxen, and stumbled out of the area they named Death Valley on foot. Although the scenery of Death Valley is abrasive, it is rarely monotonous. Every turn on these arid roads unveils a new landscape with a distinctive geological voice and a unique tale to tell. The Mesquite Dunes, the easiest to reach of all the park's dune areas, are just a short drive east of Stovepipe Wells. Take a stroll down the Salt Creek Trail further east to see lively pupfish playing in the wetlands that are still there from the lake that once filled much of the valley. Lace up your hiking boots and explore the slot canyons, marbled narrows, and rock-scattered passages of Mosaic Canyon to the south. After exploring the nearby trails, head south into the valley floor where the temperature rises as the road lowers. Zabriskie Point, a mudrock badland five miles south of Furnace Creek, has long been a source of inspiration for artists, musicians, and mystics. Take the exit onto Artists Drive, a picturesque route that offers views of the eye-catching, oxidized palette of hillside colors a few miles south. Standing at the edge of the rough salt plain that stopped the wagons of the lost 49ers in their tracks is nearby at the Devil's Golf Course. Imagine the disappointment of those lost overlanders who slapped these waters on their chapped and swollen lips only to taste water twice as salty as the sea just 10 miles down the road at Badwater. Take the route to Dante's view at the top of Coffin Peak after exploring the park's lowest point. At a height of 5,000 feet, Southern Death Valley, nature's own divine comedy, stretches out below with all the violence of hell and all the beauty of heaven. After returning to the surface, turn north and go 27 miles through Titus Canyon to Leadfield. Numerous would-be miners were attracted to these desolate hills in 1925 by deceptive advertising. Leadfield was still a deserted village in Death Valley three years later. Bert Shively was one miner who did of good fortune. The frustrated miner cornered his escape burrow in a lonely gorge and grabbed a rock toss at the unyielding animal. That pebble was never thrown, glinting in the sunlight, and the lost burrow mine continued to produce gold for many years. The racetrack, which is located just over the hill from Bert's mine, has enigmatic sliding rocks that have long been attributed to playful spirits and bored extraterrestrials. Unfortunately, science has now found more plausible culprits, including strong winds and winter ice. Head through Tea Kettle Junction from the racetrack to a park area created by steam. Drive up to the crater's rim to see how rising magma collided with cool groundwater to create the Yubaheb Crater. According to some geologists, the crater was just formed 300 years ago, serving as a reminder that Death Valley is actually very much alive and always evolving. Welcome to a place where the rusty metal and abandoned mining shafts of the past tell stories of tenacity and hope. Where awe-inspiring landscapes frighten, mystify, and enchant. Where the wind simultaneously scours the flesh and whispers all of the world's secrets. 
Alright everyone, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.